name is Aya. Hi, my name is Simhat. And my name is Connell, and uh, we just finished our final year of civil engineering at Toronto Metropolitan University. So we are Confluence Engineering. We designed a 10-story mixed-use residential building. The building consists of one floor of underground parking, a mezzanine level, and residential units, and a green roof at the terrace. Uh, we did uh, create a more complete car design called Confluence Engineering. Uh, this was actually part of uh, the project. So we created a 3D printed uh, model. So we use a 3D printer to print the whole model. So we 3D printed the foundation, which we had a tank graph on caissons. We also printed the cast in place section and we also printed the pre-cast slabs on steel frame, as long as the masonry wall that we had in the terrace. Since like the beginning of time, it's basically like architects want to do something crazy and structural engineers tell you like, that's gonna cost too much money. Well, we didn't have an actual architect, right? We had someone working with us, like pretending to be an architect. And so they gave us a bunch of architectural constraints and we tried to meet them. The best thing you can do is just try to come up with creative solutions to solve that problem. With our structure specifically, we use transfer beams, we entertain the use of transfer slabs, and you also have to try and hide that within constraints. You might try to hide a transfer beam somewhere, but you realize you can't do that because that's somebody's kitchen, right? <laughs> so these are the kinds of considerations you have to think of, and, and um, balancing them was, uh, was the toughest part of the project because we wanted to be like honest and make sure that, uh, you know, we had all our headrooms right. We didn't like throw columns through people's bedrooms. We really had to work hard to try and find a solution where we could transfer the gravity load to the soil without disrupting people's living rooms. So there are a lot of factors we consider when designing a residential building. So firstly, we need to make sure that the building could withstand all the loads, like snow loads, live loads, uh, dead loads, seismic, and uh, when. Also, we need to study the soil and the site location. So this is very important to decide whether we're gonna have a shallow or deep foundation. So since we designed the structural aspect of the building, we used ETAS, SAFE, for structural modeling. We used also Revit for detailing, and we also used AutoCAD to prepare floor plans to be inserted into SAFE and ETAPS. Also, we need to adhere all the codes and standards based on uh, the location of the building. So for our project, it was in Toronto, so we, we, had, we followed the NPCC, OBC, and the City of Toronto standards. The most important step in ensuring safe designs during engineering and construction phase is to follow the local engineering codes and standards. Uh, for example, the National Building Code of Canada or the Ontario Building Code. They actually uh, set a minimum standard, safety standards for engineers to follow as for the construction. And also like during construction, there should be a plan to have a quality control as well as inspections for uh, materials as well as the workmanship so that uh, the safety standards are being followed on site. And when it comes to the building life cycle, I believe uh, preventative maintenance, regular inspections and monitoring is the key to Make sure your structure is uh, following that standard of safety as required by the regulations. So one of our key challenges was the fact that we had poor soil conditions. And so we were trying to reduce the weight of the structure by utilizing steel, as well as precast slabs, and also accelerate construction. The main challenge we faced that the precast on steel frame structure did not align with the casting place structure. We had to use a transfer beam to transfer the load from the misaligned columns. The courses that helped us prepare for this project were concrete one, concrete two, and the steel courses. Also in the last year, we had the structural building uh, course. This also really helped us to prepare for the capstone project. The reason I like structural engineering is because it is probably the most closest to what you actually learn in school. Everything that we learned and got taught, I repeated it on the job within the first month. And within this project, it completely prepared me for what I would experience in the workplace. And that basically all of your classes like Concrete 1, Concrete 2, Steel 1, all of these classes are completely applicable. And you're going to basically be doing your hand calculations that you did in class for this project in order to justify your decisions and conversely in the workplace later you're literally going to be doing hand calculations on paper justifying your solutions exactly the way you're doing it in capstone.
One of my favorite parts uh, in this project was uh, the modeling part. We modeled the, pro like the building as we mentioned on a tab. So I really enjoyed this part, even though it was a bit challenging because we have a hybrid system. So we had up to the third floor, we had a, we had a cast in place. And then after the third floor, we had a precast slabs on the steel frame. So it was a bit challenging because of the type of the system, but we eventually we successfully uh, model the, the building. This capstone project was a, a very good learning experience for me. It was basically a stepping stone for my future career. Everything I le that I learned in school uh, pretty much applied to that capstone and also helped boost my confidence in comprehending the engineering codes and standards and how to apply them in real world situations. Other than that, I learned some soft skills like teamwork, and also, uh, like we went to the meetings and it was very important to jot down the points because uh, there was a lot of information being thrown at you at the client meetings and also the meeting with the professor. It was very important to write down those points so that when the time comes to apply, finally apply them, you actually can revisit and recall that information. It was just a coming together of everything that I've learned in school so far. You know, being guided by industry professionals, you really get to see like the start of a project, working through it, and then kind of the conclusion and how all the things you learned in school fit into that little kind of neat project. Currently, I'm working at GHG as a junior structural engineer. Right now, I'm a graduate from GNU. I'm working at Hydro One as a construction wise engineer. After graduating, I'm working as a junior engineer at Engineering Way. I would encourage like first year students to work on their soft skills, like communication skills, because it will help them a lot while networking with uh, companies, and if they want to do a co-op later, like after their third year. I would also like encourage them to check out the uh, available jobs on campus, like a research assistant, or to find a part-time job related to their um, like field. I would say just um, really focus on trying to learn the information you're using in school because it actually is insanely applicable to your work life. Every little thing that I've learned in school, I've actually applied in my job already, for the most part anyway. So I would say really focus on doing that. And also, if you wanted to actually do engineering in the field, the jobs are actually few and far between, so try and present yourself in a good light to all of your teachers and anyone you encounter and try and create a network so you can maybe get a job after.